In this lesson on exponents, we are focusing on equations with rational exponents. In our previous lesson, we had a look at exponential equations, which means the variable was in the exponent. Today, we're going to have a look at equations where the variable is in the base number and you have a rational exponent. So let's have a look at the example. To solve x in this example, we want x to the power of 1. That means we want to change the exponent of 3 over 5 to a 1. And we will do that by raising both sides of the equation to the reciprocal of the exponent. Now, reciprocal simply means the fraction swapped around. So in this case, we are going to raise both sides to the power of 5 over 3. When we now go and simplify, you will see the reason why. The exponential law says we now need to multiply those exponents. And when we multiply 3 over 5 by 5 over 3, we will get 15 over 15, which is an exponent of 1. On the right, I'm first going to change 8 to the power of 3. And then once again, multiply those exponents. When I do that, I will end with 2 to the power of 5 which is 32. There are, however, two special cases you need to be careful of. The first one is when you can get a positive and negative answer. And this will happen when the numerator of the exponent is even. Let's look at an example like this. Now, in this case, it is clear to see that the numerator of the exponent is an even number. And therefore, you need to remember that you will have two possible answers. Start off doing exactly the same as in the previous example. So we raise to the reciprocal, which is 3 over 2, and also 3 over 2 on the other side. But now you need to remember that because of that even numerator, the answer will now be plus or minus. The reason for this is whether you take a negative or a positive value, any time it is to the power of an even number, they will both end up being positive. Now we can simplify. On the left, we have x to the power of 1. On the right, I'm first going to change 9 to 3 to the power of 2. And when I now multiply those two exponents, I'm going to end up with plus or minus 3 to the power of 3, which means I have plus or minus 27. The second special case is when there's no solution. And this happens when the expression is equal to a negative value and either the numerator or denominator of the exponent is even. So let's have a look at an example like this. In this case, you can immediately write there's no solution because you can clearly see that the numerator is even and it is equated to a negative value. The reason for this is that any value to the power of an even number cannot be negative, and the same goes for any even type of root can never give you a negative value. So whether it's an even numerator, like in our example, or an even denominator in the exponent, it cannot equal a negative value. So let's now have a look at an example where this is not true. In this example, the numerator and denominator of the exponent are both odd, so it can be equal to a negative value. So now I'm going to start off again, raising to the power of the reciprocal, which will be minus 3 on both sides. And then I'll end with x equal to minus 2 to the power of minus 3, which I will rewrite as 1 over minus 2 to the power of positive 3 which is 1 over minus 8 or minus 1 over 8. Let's have a look at another example. In this example, we'll start off moving the 27 to the right by adding it on the right. And now you need to realize that you first have to divide by 8 before you raise to the reciprocal. You can only raise to the reciprocal once the base and exponent is alone on one side of the equation. So now that I've divided by the 8, I can raise to the reciprocal, which is 2 over 3, on both sides. 
On the left, I'll just have x to the power of 1 then. On the right, I'm going to rewrite in terms of prime numbers. So it's 3 to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of 3, both to the power of 2 over 3. And now I'm going to multiply both those three exponents with 2 over 3. So I'm going to have 3 to the power of 2 divided by 2 to the power of 2. So that means I have 9 over 4. In the next example, we now have three terms of which two have variables. But I'm going to remind you that if the one variable has an exponent that is double the other one, we can use trinomial factorization. Then I'm going to remind you that x to the power of 2 over 3 can be rewritten as x to the power of 2 to the power of a third, or other way around, x to the power of a third to the power of 2. As long as those two being multiplied, once again gives me 2 over 3. So I'm going to start off by rewriting the first term as x to the power of a third to the power of 2, minus 2x to the power of a third, minus 8 is 0. And now you'll realize that x to the power of a third we see more than once, so I'm going to say let x to the power of a third be equal to k. And now I'm going to substitute, so it's going to become k to the power of 2, minus 2k minus 8. And now I'm going to have to either use the formula or I'm going to have to factorize. This means that k is either 4 or k is negative 2. Now I need to remember again that k is actually x to the power of a third. So I'm going to substitute that back in. x to the power of a third is equal to 4. And I'm going to raise that to the power of 3 on both sides, which means x is equal to 64. Same thing in the second one. x to the power of a third is equal to minus 2, which is perfectly fine because the numerator and denominator are both odd. So it can be equal to a negative. I'm going to raise that to the power of 3. So I'll have x is minus 8.